Hello, Harry here. And today we are going to play Canvas Colors in the Moving City. Lots a tranquil and relaxing music. And there's bird chirping outside of my house right now. I don't know if we can hear it. It's in the middle of the night. What is wrong with you? So this visual novel is developed for Nano Reno 2021. And what makes it stand out from the rest of the visual novel that enters the entry is the fact that it really seems to, you know, I'm not an artist, watercolor or something, uh, this kind of thing, like a canvas, you could say. Which is, make it stand out and looks interesting. So yeah, enough talk, let's play the game, shall we? Ah. Oh, that's nice. Sanus had many names. It was the marching state. It was the town of Transcience. Most simply called it the moving city. And it was here where a woman named Maggie made her work. May I ask what is that thing? <laughs> it's so adorable. Maggie was a postman and thus had many different responsibilities. Oh, yeah. She is a postman? She looks like a war general. I'm just saying. Presently, it was to deliver a dwindling bundle of letters in a bag which she carried. A trivial task where it is not to be done in the moving city. Because the city is always moving, isn't it? And by the way, I really love how they make the saving. The, yeah, the skip option and the save option like this. It's nice. After all, it would be a poor nickname if the buildings did not all walk and wheel and limb and scamper about all on their own. As such, there was no fixed city plan. There was no main walkway or artery, and there were no streets or permanent ones anyway. So one had to turn their eyes up, which is what Maggie did, and this was how one navigates the city. Oh, the flag, it indicates the building. Above the homes and the shop flutter each a set of flags to indicate what is where, and who lives there. But anyway Maggie stood in a square. The stone beneath her foot remained in place in spite of the rumbling beneath her, and beside her, and all about her visible radius. Buildings shifted and lumbered forward and to the left and to the right and some lagged behind and changed positions so as to not crash into another. Is it magic or machinery? Or perhaps it's something more primeval? It's, you know, they are living beings, you could say. From where she stood, she had a decent enough view of the place. There she remained, not wholly out of fatigue, but because she was looking for the flag to which she must deliver her remaining few letters. She squinted at the heights for a glimpse of her target, keeping the contents of her satchel firmly in her mind. To home with red flag with lion upon it, moving city. Home with red flag with lion. To shop, green checkered flag, thick side of her door. Sanus or moving city, green checkered Black. Two house blue red flag. <laughs> what? What? Blow. Blow red flag, isn't it? Lock door moving side. What? Home mouth flag over a green flag. Moving city. Okay. She blew a bit air of out, out of her nose. While one of her job function was to deliver this letter. Certainly, she wasn't expected to know the name of every color of the rainbow. <laughs> so Maggie happened on a passerby and asked, Pardon me, sir? Ah, the, main fr the man froze. It was not the sight of the postman that stopped him, but her race. Plainly, Maggie was not a human. Why is that a problem? This is a moving city. And you're complaining about her not being human. Her pointed ears, tall stature, and feathered head painted Maggie as one of the vain. So she smiled at the man and maintained her distance. Okay. I'm having a small difficulty with some deliveries. Would you mind telling me what color mouth is? 
uh, Mao. The man took a half step backward as if he were making to run off somewhere. <laughs> but when he saw that Ve the vein gave no reaction, he appeared to give that up. Either she would catch up to him or she posed no threat. It's kinda pink purple or light purple, maybe. You're looking for... He stopped himself. He was old. So it was entirely possible he was a war veteran, and the scars of those who live history would always be fresher than... That's a great quote. Than those who did not, yeah. So the sight of a vanished postman before him was equally ridiculous as it was terrifying. There was a war between the two races, isn't it? Between the humans and the vanished, you could say. Or maybe it's a war between two countries. In, in one side there are Spanish, in the other side there are Spanish. I don't know. How to say it? Yeah, it. Like this. It could possibly be a war between two countries or a war between two races. Yet he continued. Oh, I never really like her anyway. Thinks really highly of herself. Does she now? She got a green flag too, so look for that. It's a plain green, then you'll see that mouth flag, or whatever she calls that nonsense. I have place to be, so I'm leaving. Okay. She thanked him for his time and looked again at the roofs of the building. Soon enough, her target appeared to her between a four-leg tower and a squad, built home with many windows. The occupants were already lowering bridge between the building. This was the other tricky part of being a postman in the moving city. A bridge could be many things. Therefore, when Maggie saw her path must cross two loosely forged welded metal mosaics, she st steal it, okay, herself and got in with the business of advanced, advanced level walking. <laughs> That's a lovely stepping sound, I like that. And the music is nice too. Each step produced a different creak, an almost musical effect that may have delighted her, where the earth not rushing bit by 12 feet below. She fought the impulse to look down, though in crossing only halfway, she saw the only thing keeping the bridge moored to the other end were a couple of sacks of floor. No, she thought, this is not a bridge, this is an ordeal. <laughs> oh god, I'm so done with it. When the square behind her shook, and oh yeah, the square, and in turn rattled the bridge, she voted immediately to sprint the, rem the remaining ten feet. <laughs> her boots rattled the bridge with each pounding step, shaking the floor backs bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. She arrived. Maggie took only a moment to steady her nerve and allow a moment for her knees to cease their quivering. <laughs> As she called herself, she thought to exact a fine, to exact a fine on, of, on the owner of this plot of land, the builder of this bridge, for endangering the lives of any who thought to cross. <laughs> she even thought to kick the bridge over the side for the betterment of everyone. <laughs> Wait, where you go, Maggie? Of both folks, she entertained neither, and instead received the second floor to stabilize the path some. And she continued on quickly. The woman found her target soon enough and with little further trouble. There was the green flag, there was the pink purple flag above it, and that was all the verification she required after risking her life. Typically she would ask the recipient for some sort of identification as it was her job as postman to confirm people are who they say they are. It was her job as well to check up on them and investigate ill going on and apprehend criminals and their dealings at her discretion. I know it. You're not just a postman. Your costume is to... Well, there's a sword, I can say it, for a postman. You're also a police. But this time she merely wanted to be done with her deliveries so she could pound back a tall mug of ale and relax. So she dropped the delivery in a little, little letter box by the door and that was the end of it. Now remain three letters. She found a shop with a green checkered flag first which turned out to be a pub and she made a mental note to visit them later. 
Bidding them luck, the letter was not a bill. She found a house with a blue red flag and a black door next, and the recipient was a rather crotchety old, wo old woman who threatened violence upon the man who wrote the letter. <laughs> she requested Maggie stick around a moment while she wrote her reply that she did not, in fact, owe the man any money, and that it was a bet made over 30 years ago, so it was past time to let that go. The old woman made sure to spit into the envelope before handing it to Maggie. <laughs> Her letter revolved the previous as an exercised atrocity of penmanship, made worse by the haste in which she had written the thing, and a gulp of spittle that had begun to leak through. <laughs> Maggie reminded her to attach the proper postage, and she headed off with direction all the while keeping watch for the final hole. Okay, so I guess this is where our adventure begins, the final home, isn't it? The postman dropped off the damp, the damp, damp envelope without ceremony or without so much as a knock on the door. Best not to get caught up in this mess, she thought. What mess? But then there was the final letter. It had been hours and its owner was nowhere inside. She checked the address again. Red flag with lion upon it. Nothing of the sort appeared to her. Ah, it's not in the city, isn't it? Interesting, it's somewhere else because it's a moving city, every building moves. Maggie founds a high plaza surrounded by a dense cluster of buildings, most of which move by mechanical lag. See watch for a moment. It was a small wonder none of them step on one another or trip over another's leg, yes. Rather it was more like an intricate dance than a group of homes and businesses marching aimlessly through the desert. From her vantage point, she had a better view of the city. Certainly there were red flags, but, sm but most appeared plain, and of the remainder, none appeared to be the one she sought. Was it possible the house had fallen behind? They all seemed tethered to one another, moving together as a school of herrings. Perhaps, she giggled to herself, a larger house had eaten it. <laughs> ah, you smile, I didn't expect that. Excuse me, excuse me, miss. Maggie cover up the attention of a woman passing by. What? That woman have. <laughs> ah, adorable. I'm looking for a home with a red flag that has a lion on it. Afraid I don't know the one, sorry. Okay. She much march on her way, so Maggie found another, another person. Sir, could you help me find someone? Oh, okay. That looks... Hello. I'm in a hurry, postman. Okay. Will this take long? I'm looking for a house with a red flag that should have a lion on it. Can I help you? Good day. <laughs> okay. And this continued for the greater part of an hour. It seemed none knew or cared to let sleep where the house might be. Maggie even considered covering her feathers and hiding her ear, as if that were the source of the problem. Oh. Though it was more likely the people around her simply did not know. This was a city after all. Who could keep track? Who memorized the numbers of building on a lane? So she switched tactics and put on her thief taker's demeanor. She put her hand to her sword and stopped the first person she saw. <laughs> Sir, I need to speak with you for a moment regarding a case. Oh, <laughs> isn't that kind of abuse of power or something like that? A postman job was not just to deliver parcel correspondence. Oh yeah, okay. A postman job was not just okay. It's I already read that. They were guards and hunters of criminals and could even be called on as militia. Ah, I see. As such, it's. Postman carried a sword at their waist. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she threw her weapon on the man for a bit of intimidation. Better to play the part of a mildly unhinged lawbringer. I love I love this special novel. It has those manga aesthetic too, with this kind of thing. The man eyes widened and he stopped everything he was doing. You know, comic aesthetic. But I rather call it manga aesthetic because it looks more like a manga 
Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, his eyes literally scratched. The man, the man's eyes widened and he stopped everything he was doing. A home has gone missing lately and I suspect something out of food. Do you know anything of the sort? <laughs> What's with the face? It doesn't fit the whole visual. The whole frame of the visual novel. Look at this canvas stuff. Look at that. So good, so nice. And then this. Oh my god. A home missing? No, no, not that I can recall. I mean, there was that one house a couple days ago that broke down. A house broke down. Yeah, it was just a small one, you know, and so we, I mean other people, they tried helping her out. Must have been a bad furnace or something, so the people offered to help and she just didn't say anything. Looked like she lost a big bed. Eventually, she told everyone to back off and that was the end of it. That's all I know. Did the house have a red flag? I don't know, maybe, I don't remember that well. She slackened her stand and not to let him leave. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. Oh god, help. If this was indeed the place she was looking for, she would need to hire a carriage to backtrack the city's path. Okay. While the city plot along, it was not so slow that her task would not take hours longer. You know, you haven't explained at all what is that thing over there. This was proving far more difficult than it need to be. Maggie resolved to turn her out of the city once this last delivery was done. Ah, but she would again be taking Val, Val further from her home. She was distracted for a moment, thinking of the young girl that traveled with her. Val had followed Maggie around for at least a month now and she was begin beginning to wonder if the girl was at all homesick or even thought to write her family. Veil, who is it? But that was a question for, for when she was around. And so Maggie found another poor pedestrian to interrogate and set about looking for her charge. <laughs> no, poor pedestrian. She found Veil in a crowded plaza, interesting a small group with magic and parlor tricks. She would briefly conjure up a glowing pale light about her fingers and then... Once the interest of the crowd was stopped, place her hand together and pretend to separate. What? <laughs> pretend to separate her thumb from her hand. What? You have the ability to conjure a glowing pale light about her fingers, and then, <laughs> yeah, that, and then you choose to do that trick <laughs> where you pretend to separate your thumb from your hand. <laughs> what? Okay. Oh. I accidentally click on a history. Oh, that's... I love that sketch. This kind of sketch stuff. Background, that's nice. And she chose to use that thumb trick. One of the group gasped while the remainder clapped, dropping small coins in a wicker basket nearby. Once they were gone, Vale huffed, but upon seeing Maggie approach, she brightened right up. Aww. How did it go? They look impressed. Would have impressed even my family. I did the glowy thing with my hand and pretend to remove my thumb. <laughs> and before that, I pretend to float. Ah, that's awesome, but... <laughs> are all people in this age are so <laughs> unaware of their thumb trick? Did you see how impressed my magic with my magic they, are they were? And they dropped a whole bunch of coins into the basket. I think it's like that thing where you throw flowers at play. Uh huh. It's. Oh, sorry, I skipped something. Did I go back? Oh, yeah. It's a version of that. Yeah. So I guess you could say I'm getting better with this magic stuff, don't you think? Yes, you did. I think so. Maybe a traveling magician will take you on as an apprentice. Veil vale puff up a bit in pride, turning her head to hide the blush. He shall have to wait. I'm on a mission. Oh, you're on a mission. Anyway, all done. Huh. Not quite. We have to hire a carriage for the last one. Apparently house can break down houses can break down. And for some reason the lady who lives in the house wish not for help. So we have now a several hours right ahead ahead of us. Yeah. 
Vale flicked the veal coins out of her basket like they were ants on a pastry. She then looked. She then took the basket and followed Meg. Sorry. The pair crossed several bridges to a very surface which Maggie had located earlier. They found the shop owner, and at once Maggie flashed her postman badge. He bade them follow downstairs to a low balcony where they saw a trio of carriage each hooked up to a craggy stone golem. Oh, stone golem. <laughs> when I'm thinking of stone golem, I, I'm i not expecting about this kind of stuff. The golem stood like little like large statues staring to the receding horizon with no apparent sentience. The shop owner scribbled something on a piece of paper, unhinged the school cap of one of the golems, slipped the note inside, and closed it up. Soon the golem shivered. I love. Yeah, that's nice. Using the sun. I love the sun. Soon the golem shivered to life, and Megan Vale boarded the cap and they set off. How did that thing move? Does it move like one of. You know, the SpongeBob, SpongeBob episode with that moving rock? Does it move like that? Ah, oh, that's a nice sign. But I think I... Oh, you can see the moving city in the in the background. You, you can see it moving. Yeah, that's nice. Lovely. And it makes my computer lagging. So I think I have to end the video right here. It's a one hour visual novel approximately with 10,000 words. I'm just gonna cut it on this 30 minute mark so see you later then in the next part of canvas color in the moving city bye bye